good morning we'll uh, resume our discussion on perceptron and then move on to logistic regression and kernel perceptron so recap the stochastic gradient descent algorithm for perceptron so we discussed that the perceptron update rule was nothing but gradient descent evaluated on a per example basis with respect to a loss function which is the hinge loss so this was the hinge loss okay so max of some unsigned error unsigned distance which is supposed to be unsigned but turns out to be signed and uh, zero so we discussed this and then uh, we saw that this is nothing but um, the, the perceptron update rule uh, there should be a phi here this is, a, this is x or in general phi x times y when added to w gives you the perceptron update rule often what you do is process these in batches so assume that you have this data set and you could think of the data set as sets of batches okay so what you could do is update w not using a single example but as a summation uh, over a batch okay let's call this b capital b so b1 b2 b3 and so on so some bi times is uh, y phi x okay or in general you can think of the gradient evaluated over us over elements in a batch okay so this is exactly the uh, batch update stochastic stochastic but it's batch stochastic this is a standard gradient descent yeah but perceptron happened to be uh, perceptron was stochastic i'm just saying we can have an uh, we can have an intermediate solution where instead of looking at the gradient on all examples or gradient on a single example you could look at a gradient on a subset of examples that's all ha huh, so why did we think of perceptron on a per instance basis one one reason is that perceptron was also inspired by trying to correct the classification on example remember from your previous safe quiz uh, one question was if you correct the um, the w for a single example will is it guaranteed to get classified not necessarily but there's a tendency to get it correctly classified so it's also because of the um, non differentiable the the nature of the loss function which has a step right so we we don't expect that uh, you need all the examples to be able to make a change not every example is going to contribute why because a single example might itself help you correct classification on many other examples so that was the motivation we began there right and then now we are trying to give a gradient descent view perspective so so if b is a data set uh you get what what do you get if b is the entire data set you get the regular gradient descent update okay also towards the end of last class i said that you don't have to necessarily uh subscribe to using the w at the end of the algorithm 
you could also have voted perceptron for example you could use multiple intermediate w's and uh, give weightage based on how many it correctly classified that w correctly classified right so um, so voted perceptron will just say well take the w which is the best amongst the last few average will say well i'll take an average of all the last few w's but weigh them by how well that w contributes to the classification so what it picks w with best classification accuracy for last few iterations whereas average perceptron takes weighted average instead of voting it weights There are multiple reasons from an optimization perspective, especially when we get into more complex cascaded models. We are dealing with non convex functions which have very um, the nature of these surfaces. So, you might land up overfitting on the data set, right? and even from the point of view of complete linear separability, you might just land up classifying, right? I mean, this is these are positive, these are negatives. And just because you want linear separability, I mean separability or, or separation, you will end up with uh, just classifying. Whereas some of this, this could be noise. So we want to generalize and not overfit. Right. So therefore, the last one uh, which kind of tries to possibly minimizes error and possibly minimizes error in a local sense. So it's probably got you to some local. Uh, local value. So, there are two reasons local value and overfitting to noise. Okay. Linear regression uh, you are not first of all dealing with uh, discount I mean this uh, or, or non differentiable functions and uh, we in linear regression we really didn't deal with the problem of classification which is combinatorial in nature it was fitting right or fit. there also we had a regularizer i mean see all this is also think of this also as another tool for regularization so all this is to avoid overfitting to basically uh, ensure that uh, we generalize well. Okay, so, these are mechanisms. So, now we move on to logistic regression. We saw that the decision function associated with perceptron was a step function. So, it was giving minus 1 or plus 1 and that was just based on W transpose phi. Right. Now, is it possible that when we start uh, using cascades of such step functions, we run into more serious problems in terms of getting robust parameter updates. So, what logistic regression attempts is create a smooth surrogate approximation to the step function. So, what it does it says well sigma x will be smooth okay, and will be in the open interval 0 comma 1 instead of minus 1 plus 1 it goes to 0 1 
but that's not such an important issue you can always rescale right so for example this another function called the hyperbolic tangent which can get you to minus 1 plus 1 so the uh, we, we should not be too bothered about whether it's uh, what the upper and lower limit are but what we are looking at is a smooth approximation to the step function Can you guess what this form of sigma should be? Can you guess some possible functions sigma? And the sigma for the time being let it be just w transpose uh, a function of w transpose phi x itself. So let us write sigma s in more sigma of uh, s in more general terms and then observe in terms of W transpose phi x. Shifted tan inverse x. Why do you want to shift it? So from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, you want to get it to 0 to 1. Anything else? Any other form? Okay, so there's one form. So in general, this uh, you can use this omega as a general uh, activation function. Sigma is one particular activation function. Okay, so so I I would say what you are prompting here is the general form of omega the activation function. It could also be, so how about the following, 1 upon 1 plus e raised 2 minus s, how does this look like, can you try and plot this? What happens is s goes to infinity? tends to 1, what as happens as goes to minus infinity, 0. Okay. So, this is actually the form of sigma s. So the sigmoid function when, uh, when omega is a sigmoid function, then you, you basically get logistic regression. Okay, so when omega is the step function, you basically get when omega is the sine function, the this is what we have been discussing over the last one week, what is this? This is perceptron, right. So, okay, so through this general activation function um, scheme, we can now view several uh, models. So, it could be sigma, it could be sine function and as someone has pointed out, you could look at shifted tan inverse. But let us focus on sigma because it is it is one of the first uh, and, and very very popular models, it has also some nice properties. So, the, this use of omega in give you gives you this generalized linear model. So, it is linear model but generalized through the activation function. 
So ultimately we have to realize, we are so question is why, what kind of omega would you like? So we are trying to create differential, differentiable options, right, to the step function, differentiability. And obviously you would like it to have a bounded range. It may not achieve the high upper and lower limits, sigma does not ever become 1 or 0, but it should be bounded above and below. And we will see more examples later on, let us uh, let us now continue the story with sigmoidal perceptron. So, we can call it a sigmoidal perceptron classifier right? and we will see several similarities with perceptron in terms of update rules etc. So, let us look at the simple logistic regression which is binary which is two class case and here the classes are 0 or 1. So, just note that difference. Okay, so, the non smooth sign is replaced by the smooth sigma w. So, this is uh, this is sigma s, sigma s is a sigmoid function. Now, you can think of sigma w, uh, the other reason 0 1 is interesting is now we can actually view this as probability. So, we are giving a probabilistic interpretation to this activation. So, you could think of this as the probability of class 1 p r y equals 1 given x sigma of w transpose phi x. Okay. So, which means the form of y equals 0 given x is obvious e raised to minus w transpose phi x. So, you get the two class probabilities. What does this remind you of? Outcomes of 0 and 1, the probabilities associated with each. In which distribution are we talking about? Bernoulli, right our favorite, favorite Bernoulli coin tossing model. The uh, only difference is that the parameter is what? What is the parameter of the Bernoulli here? Well, it is w, but from a Bernoulli perspective, what is a what is the parameter? Is this sigma of this form, right? Sigma is a This is a sigma. So, view this as Okay, the only thing is now the actual real parameter is w, that is what you want to estimate, not sigma as such, because sigma is a fixed form. So, now then we get to the usual routine. What would we do next? So, let us look at the story of perceptron. Is someone? What did we do next? We, we in this case of perceptron, we de uh, defined our uh, function, activation function, which is the sine function. Thereafter, so we we tried and uh, wrote down the loss function or the objective function that we want to maximize or minimize. So, what did we do in the case of uh, Bernoulli? What was what were we doing? We are trying to maximize. First is you define the model. So, recap in the case of Bernoulli. Second step was yeah. 
estimation how did we estimate in the case of bernoulli what objective did we try and maximize huh likelihood right maximize likelihood or i mean in the, this was the case of bernoulli in the least case of least squares what did we do minimize error recap least squares so in the case of uh, regression interestingly we will show you both in the case of logistic regression okay we will maximize likelihood and then also show that there is actually an error we are minimizing which is very intuitive then what is the third step define algorithm right uh, uh, prescribe algorithm and this is what your lab is about lab is all about step 3 and then what else are overfit ho gaya what do you do regularize so you'll say okay i'll revisit i'll revisit step 2 say likelihood nahi chala so i'll regularize i'll do a map estimation whatever right okay so pretty much this will what what will follow and then we'll move on to the next topic so the question is are we changing the objective objective is not really changed it's just that we are now associating a probability with the class value that's it so yes we would have changed the label from plus minus 1 earlier in this case of sign to 0 1 but other than that we are just doing we are uh, we are trying to give probabilistic semantics to the classification problem okay so logistic regression is a sigmoidal perceptron classifier estimator w hat will now be a function of the data set that's a step number 2 so we have uh, so let's with respect let me identify where we are so step 1 with respect to whiteboard was establishing the model and step 2 uh, will be basically estimation and specifically we will do it through we will get, get beginning with maximum likelihood estimation it also makes sense because we have a Bernoulli view of the logistic regression model right only thing is the coin tossing is now happening through one more layer the coin tossing is happening through a sigma which is dependent on w's dot product with phi and so on right okay what will be the maximum likelihood the likelihood function so we all know that it's the it's, it has to be the distribution of what we observe the data set but viewed as a function of the parameters so what's the form we'll write this also on the board so what do you observe in this in this case the coin tosses when you uh, what do you observe outcomes are heads or tails now the the fact that a coin toss involved a w an example x that is a part of the conditioning that's not part of the observation observation is heads or tails right so what we'll do here is we look at the joint distribution the distribution of y1 y2 
y m those are the outcomes which are all each of this is in 0 1 the whole thing is 0 1 raised to m given what given w but given also x1 to xm see please understand that here we are like in the case of regression we are not trying to model the x1 to xm how they are coming they are given to us we want to get the distribution of the y1 to ym can i assume that these y1 to ym are indep independent given the x1 to xm the class labels so um, the, this is typical classification where I make this IID assumption the identical distribution is on the yi's conditioned on the xi's and uh, independence is amongst the yi's given the xi's. Now you please help me complete everything is uh, on the board you will basically use the sigma write down this form and I, I have already given you a hint just need to recap Bernoulli. So question is, is there a case in which the yi's are dependent on each other? Yes, they could be. So the rainfall, uh, whether it rained today depends on whether the rain, whether it rained yesterday, right? Now that is a subject matter for graphical models. We'll we'll talk about that subsequently. But yes, in fact, the, uh, a natural extension of logistic regression where you don't have the IID assumption is called the conditional random field. The question was whether xi's need to be assumed to be independent. The answer is no, xi's are given to you. The yi's are independent given the xi's. But even then I might, as I said, whether it rained today will depend on whether it can depend on whether it rained yesterday because it is just benefit. I, I, I benefit from information of yesterday whether it rained. Could be also because the x uh, the x i's are not completely informative about y i's that could be another reason. So therefore I had to well, I mean the, the temp, let us say I measure temperature, uh, humidity everything today right the day of the year but maybe that is still not good enough for me to predict whether it is rain whether it will rain today. So I might want to look at oh, whether it rained yesterday to predict whether it will rain today. So the IID assumption is true in many cases for example spam spam emails whether my new email is a spam or not does not really depend on whether a previous email was spam unless you also try and capture the structure of the spammer the guy who sent that email is the same as the guy who sent but typically you will find that spammer emails are also new all the time so it is it is not easy to get any underlying structure behind spam beyond the features. I am just leaving some answers to questions that were raised.
non id could be handled through graphical models we'll talk about it little later number of y is equal to 0 to y i by n minus number of y i is so you looking at the maximum likelihood estimate itself it may not be as simple so he is trying to say well you can get the w's using the uh, the ratio of y which is 0 to 1 but that is not simple because it is all through the sigma. In the case of Bernoulli you could just say maximum likelihood estimate was number of heads divided by total number of coin tosses. But here you are trying to estimate w's. So, what you are looking at is yeah so w hat is arg max over w of this form. So, what is that form is what I am asking. So, what is that? Sigma w transpose phi xi raised to yi 1 minus sigma w transpose phi xi raised to 1 minus y. right. So, this is the arc max you are seeking. W hat will be arc max of this term across all values of W. Okay, let us write this more specifically and the, under the IID assumption we are saying Now, this form is clear. What else are we familiar with? The arg max will be the same under a monotonically increasing transformation, and which is that transformation we are familiar with? Log, right? So, I can also say this is arg max under W of the log of this whole thing. And what is this? So, let us try and write this and that is interesting. This is what will get us to the minimization of error perspective. Okay. Let us write this. You take a log from outside, you get a sum over logs. log of this first term which has y i as exponent will be y i of the log of that sigma right. Plus 1 minus Now, you can if you want you can expand it further and substitute for sigma, but what do you know about sigma? Sigma is a is the probability of heads ok. So, we are going to now view this uh, I try and understand this component, um, but before I do that I am going to also write it as a minimization problem. Maximizing log of the likelihood should uh, the arg max should correspond to the argument of negative of that same objective. Okay, so 
if I take minus of log and try and minimize it, this is the log LW, L, DW, this is the minus of log L, DW. So, this W hat would correspond to the same point. Okay, so I have some interpretation for the argmax, right? Argmax is argmax of W or Bernoulli trials with parameters sigma W. The first part in red, everyone understands, right? Now, how do I interpret the argmin? Argmin of this minus term ok. So, I am going to play a game with you to help you I stole from my kitchen. So, let us say I have these um, there is no space here maybe I will use this front desk but you guys will see everything. Oh, I need to hide and ensure secrecy as well ok. So, for the time being imagine you you turned into small kids and enjoy this game. So, we have these balls which look very similar and uh, I think I will have to do it there, there is no space here ok. So, let us three balls, I have five, I will just play with three balls ok. So, uh, please now look at the thought experiment. Uh, the thought experiment is that I have hidden the small ball under one of these. Right, and you are allowed to ask queries. What is the query you are allowed to ask? You are allowed to ask me to show one bowl. Right. Let us say you ask me to show this bowl, and I say, Well, this the small bowl is not inside this one. Right, then you ask one more query. So, what, what I have done by placing the small bowl under the big bowl is I have created the data this is the data, this is like the y i's and your queries are to build your model, you are trying to build your model, where is that small bowl, right. Your second query you get it right, oh it is here. So, what we are trying to do is think of these y i's or 1 minus y i's as answers to your queries coming from the data set. Think of this log, the sigma, think of the sigma as your mental model of where the small bowl is, right. You expect some structure. The reason you are asking me, I mean if you are very silly you will, you might, you might repeat a question, fir se dikhao. But I might for example, shuffle these, I might just shuffle these and if you keep track of the way I shuffled them, you would probably not ask me to show the same bowl again, right. So, so this so these are the revealed pink balls, the y i's and the 1 minus y i's. And sigma and 1 minus sigma your understanding, but your probabilistic understanding of where the small ball might lie, is that clear? Ok, so this, this term has an interesting name, okay. minus of log, it is called a cross entropy term okay. and I will again maybe use one more example to show to highlight the, the semantics, but what you are trying, trying to say is there is a data distribution that you are trying to model, right. You are, this is a memory game, so you are trying to, you are trying to reproduce the reality and in the memory game this is the data, y i is the data and that is what I have. You as the users, you have your, the, the people playing the game are asking me questions you have the, you are the model, I am the data, you are the model. 
right? And you ask me queries to re refine your model. So this, what this term is doing, this uh, objective is doing is trying to capture the match or in the uh, match or mismatch between my distribution and your distribution, between the data distribution and your distribution, right? So I'm going to write this in plain words, uh, and we'll again develop on it. Argwin of I'm using distance very between data distribution and model distribution. So this yi is the data distribution. Sigma w is the model distribution. In terms of the examples we have seen so far, the data distribution is the pink balls and the, and the small ball lying beneath them, right? And the model distribution is your mental model. This is clear? So we are trying, that's what this intro, cross entropy term is trying to see, look at. Now what the log term does is says well is as per your model distribution what would be the length of the representation right so how do how would log behave if as sigma becomes close to 1 and how would log behave as sigma becomes close to 0 you seen that earlier yes so as sigma becomes close to 0 it will become minus infinity right Okay, so it, it um, how does it behave? It's concave convex. How is it? Is it curved up, curved down? It's curved down. Is there something like this? So, think of minus of log, so this is log, but let us now think of this, there is a negative term here. So minus of log would behave, right? So, what happens? The sigma. So, when sigma is one, minus log of log is zero. When sigma gets close to zero, minus of log is infinity. So, if your if the if your event if your uh, outcome is extremely likely, then minus of log says extremely likely means probability close to 1, then you need very less information to encode. You should encode it with the smallest number of bits. Why? Because that is going to be frequent. Anything that is very likely should be encoded very compactly, right? From coding, uh, that is that's, that's a basic idea of coding. Think, uh, so how many of you use zip for, everyone is, everyone uses, right? So what is the idea, uh, how, do, how do these compression programs uh, function? If A occurs very frequently, then I would encode it the smallest right, possible code, using the smallest possible code. Anything that is less frequent, I would have long, long codes. So uh, I mean I am talking about binary coding, you could also do Huffman coding, let us talk about binary coding. How many of you have done binary coding? At least come across this. Some of you have. So this log is basically capturing the amount of information, amount, uh, the length of the code required and that length in this model says it should be proportionate to the negative of the log. If it is very frequent, have very few bits required to, to encode. If it is very infrequent, probability close to 0. 
your length basically increases. Okay, so again the maximum likelihood estimator for W, this is a form we have and uh, as I said uh, now when we, we say this is the same as minus of argument over W. So, I am going to now move the minus inside summation i equals 1 to m minus of log of sigma w x i times y i plus or minus of log of 1 minus sigma w x i times 1 minus y i. Now, the coding is being done using which model? Is it using the data or using the actual observation? The coding is being done using the model sigma w, the coding as per the model. sigma or 1 minus sigma. That model says whether its event is likely or not likely such that likely that is sigma becomes 1 should require fewer bits. Then unlikely sigma tending to 0. Please note likely and unlikely are with respect to model. Okay, so, I want to really emphasize this here. Coding is as per model distribution. So, when that means likely is as per model, unlikely is as per model. And this is what we mean by model. But what are you coding? The coding length is as per the model. But what are you coding? The observations. Whether there was a ball here or here or here. Those are the observations. You are coding the observation using your mental model which is being refined. I mean you, you, your mental model has a parameter w. It is not fixed. You learn as you make observations. Okay. The data is observations that you code. Okay, so, maximum likelihood coincides with something else which I said is called the cross entropy and I am ok. So, so, again uh, maximizing likelihood is the same as minimizing the negative log likelihood. This summarizes what we have just said. The cross entropy, you can derive the expression for Ew like we did here. Cross entropy is the average number of bits. So, this is a simple text, textual description is the average number of bits needed to identify an event, example x or its label y drawn from the data set. If a coding scheme is used that is optimized for a model probability distribution, probability of y given the model uh, parameters rather than the true distribution, y given the data. So, true distribution is the data, but you do not know the data distribution. So, you are coding according to your model distribution, 
but what are you coding you are coding the data you are coding your observations so if in case you don't have ping balls at home or in your hostel room you can play this memory game uh, right okay so the same thing I mean, you you played this in cards but you can just to illustrate what this means okay so you basically turn you turn these cells on can turn two at a time because they didn't match it just disappeared but you have to remember what were those two cards okay this is king but two kings i had already identified ah they didn't match ah somehow didn't work wifi isn't on but you can have a, uh, you can look at it offline i've put the link okay so uh, it's the same idea same idea the cards are what lies beneath the cards is the data what you are guessing and trying to imp improvise upon is your model Okay, so this is what uh, we kind of evolved so far. You can also look at this entire, so this long expression that you have, the cross entropy error function, this is uh, the expected, expected number of bits that you need to compress the entire data where the expectation with respect, is respect to the model distribution. And what you are trying to compress or represent is the data. Okay, and that same thing has been uh, elaborated here. Exactly what we had on the board. Okay. Now, with some simplification, you can write it slightly differently. And I just wanted to tease your memory. So, same thing has been written differently. But what does this first component remind you of? perceptron somebody said perceptron right and this is like you remember the signed unsigned loss so it's a some so it resembles that the first component resembles the unsigned loss but that's just to show you well there's some semblance uh, let's not get into details here not very important So, uh, as far as gradient descent is concerned, there is no closed form solution. So, we resort to gradient descent as usual. This is a cross entropy loss. So, it is an argument over the negative of this, uh, this component. And you can write down the descent update. We will not get into the derivation. This is something you can do. I think I have also put it as part of the tutorial, the derivation. Okay, so, now I want to get, you the, uh, get to the update rule. How does it look like? And the stochastic again that will help you draw a parallel with perceptron update. Okay, so this is the iterative update rule. And this is the stochastic version of the same. Stochastic which is evaluating on one example at a time. So we are now at the stage of prescribing the algorithm. Let us look at the stochastic version. So, this is the logistic regression, stochastic log logistic regression uh, gradient update. For perceptron, what was it? Wk plus 1 is Wk plus 
theta times oh sorry yes plus eta times y i phi x i yeah this is if a form is classified this form is classified points perceptron at this update stochastic logistic regression says well i can update for every example because i am now dealing with probabilities and i'll update to the degree that there is misalignment of yi with sigma so that the, this this is the misalignment or rather alignment you will not update if this this is the alignment with sigma is that clear okay and and uh, you can look at the overall gradient descent as just summing up this across all the points if you put a, put a sum across all the points and divide by 1 upon m you get the non stochastic version can do a batch stochastic by changing m to be a smaller batch so even in its update it's a smooth version of perceptron logistic regressions right okay so you can just contrast this two with special focus on this component y i here and y i minus this component and it turns out that for generalized linear models you can basically do the same i mean there is a similar update rule for generalized linear models okay but we'll look at this more when we look at uh, neural networks uh, other other activation functions so you can look at others linear regression ridge regression all of them can be viewed now as generalized linear models g in the case of linear regression is just identity g is exactly identity function g of s is s for ridge regression again g of s is s so s we are we have not done now we'll do it later uh, we'll do this later uh, hopefully later but these are i mean these again can be viewed as generalized linear models but specifically non parametric regression says the g will keep changing with the data the g can change with the data form of g could change with s basically it's no longer just g is gs gs of s that's how non parametric regression functions we are not look at it right now but perceptron and logistic are favorites for the time being we have seen their forms okay for perceptron g s is step function or sign function the sign for logistic it's a sigma now it turns out that you can regularize logistic regression as well why so that you can address overfitting this is the regularized logistic uh but rather regularized cross entropy loss function all have i done here is added this additional component the sigma so lambda by 2m norm w square i just added that to this lot loss function that's it that's regularization i want the parameters w to be small avoid overfitting by discouraging large values of wj 
So now I want you to guess what will be a probabilistic explanation. We will not go through all that again, the math again, but guess. Now, you, now when you see regularization, you should be able to guess. So the answer, one answer is a Gaussian prior on W. And that indeed turns out to be the case. This W map for logistic regression is um, the regularized guy is exactly this. Argmax over W of EW mentioned above. Uh, this is assuming. Gaussian prior on Ws. So each W uh, Wj we'll assume is normal with centered at mean zero and variance one upon lambda. Okay, so I think this is uh, this is probably the I'll, I've put it in the tutorial. But again, we don't have to keep doing this for every case. We have a good, you know, good enough idea. I think tutorial five. Yeah, you can take. Uh, it's a Bayesian pro posterior probabilistic explanation to regularized LR. So again, we have seen this. Uh, we have seen the uh, the iterative update rule, but now this is a stochastic version of the iterative update rule for for the regularized logistic regression. It will just have this minus lambda minus eta times wk that's obvious right because if you look at the gradient of norm w square to norm that will be w 2w right so and if you put a half here then it just be w so we had a half here right and we had a lambda by 2m so the m also kinds of cancels out across m instances of W. Now you can extend this to multi class very easily. You can extend logistic regression to multi class. What you can do is for each class you can have a different weight vector. So you could do the following you could say I have these different regions. C1, C2, C3 and each will have a different parameter WC1, WC2, WC3. But one thing you notice is for two classes how many parameters vectors we needed? 2 or 1. For two classes what did we do? We had sigma and 1 upon 1 minus sigma of the same W. So for K classes do you need K Ws or fewer would do? K minus 1 would do. Because the kth class is determined by negation of all the other classes. So I do not need this explicitly. WC3 not needed. And so therefore we deal with just k minus 1 parameters, but the same form. Everything is same, same except that. For the k minus 1 classes, you will have this form. For the kth class, it will just be 1 minus the others. Okay, you can also do this for k class. I mean, no, nobody stops you from having parameters for each of the k classes. You can have parameters for each of the k classes also, but it is not necessary. Uh, what we will do is in the next class we will we'll move on to a very simple variant of perceptron and in fact we will do that for logistic regression using something called kernel, it is a trick. <laughs>